Now we are going to consider the case with frictions. So in the case with no friction, the kinetic energy will end up with all the potential energy we stored in the spring in the beginning. But with friction, the energy will decrease by the amount of work done by the friction. So let's calculate that in scenario A. So in scenario A, the plug is sliding horizontally. So the friction is going back which equals to the coefficient of friction times normal force. In this case, only gravity is pulling the block downward, so the normal force should equal to the gravity, and they should balance each other vertically. So we have the work done by the friction will be friction times the amount of distance the uh, move, and friction will be mu k, mg which is a constant throughout the entire process so this will be the work done by friction so we can calculate the amount of kinetic energy left the work done by friction is going to be this value and the kinetic energy is one half mv squared so moving everything to the other side we have m over k l squared minus 2 mu k g l and then take the square root we get our final speed for the block with friction you can see it will be smaller and the bigger the coefficient of friction is the smaller this speed will get now let's look at scenario b so for scenario b because the spring is pushing kind of downward so the force done by the friction will have a vertical component going downward. Let's call this angle theta. Then we will have F sine theta going downward, which means that there will be an extra term in our normal force to balance this downward force. And this normal force will make the friction become bigger because the block is pressed against the surface of the floor. So we will have a more complicated expression for the friction. And we will think that this block should go slower when there's friction because right now the, the normal force is bigger. So this block in scenario B should get a bigger friction than this block in scenario A. Therefore, it should move slower when there's friction presenting. We're not supposed to calculate exactly how big the friction is, but I'm going to do it anyway. So the work done by the friction in this case will be mu k mg plus this force of the spring is already calculated over here. So let's pull it over. And to get the sine theta, we know that this spring right now has a length of L squared plus k x squared. And here is L. So sine theta is L squared plus x squared square root L. So this will have a square root of L square plus S square L. So this is going to be our work done by friction going from L 0 to square root of 3 L. So the first term is easy. It's mu k mg, nothing related to x, so just times the upper value minus down value of the x. So this is our first term. The second term is harder because there is this square root of stuff over here. Let's pull out all the constant. We have mu k. Let's just put mu k in the front because every term here has mu k, showing that every term is related to friction. So we have uh, k to l, l. So it will be plus 2k l square and then the integration of this stuff. Finally, we have our last term with square root canceling square root. So it will be minus KL. So let's do minus KL and integration of X will give me square root of 3L. And everything has to multiply the coefficient of friction. So to do this integration, we first move the, we first divide both denominator and nominator by L. 
So divide top by L, divide bottom by L. The denominator will be 1 plus this x over L square. So we can now define x over L as something called a cinch square. Let's call it cinch square alpha. Let's call it, no, just call it cinch alpha. And then in this case, we are going to first, so initially we integrate x from 0 to square root 3L. Then for here, we will get the cinch alpha here, which the differentiation of cinch will be cos, hyperbolic cosine. So we will get, and at the bottom, this will give us 1 plus cinch square alpha. And this thing will be cos square alpha. So I will get cos over square root of cos square, which is going to be cos. So I just get the integration of alpha. And when x is 0, cinch alpha will be 0, which means alpha will be 0. So I'm integrating from 0 to arc sinh alpha, uh, arc sinh square root of 3. Because when x is square root of 3L, this thing is square root of 3. So sinh alpha equals 3 means alpha equals arc sinh square root of 3. So this will give me switch arc sinh square root of 3. So combining everything here, we have the work of work done by friction equals three terms. The first term is this. Let me make it look nicer by pulling the square root of three to the front. And we have the second term after integration will give us a factor of uh, sinh minus uh, arc sinh square root of three. And we can also combine the last, we can write the last term as square root 3k L square. So this thing will give me two terms with k L square. It will be k L square plus 2 sinh, uh, arc sinh square root 3 minus square root of 3. It is kind of tiring to write everything out, so let's use our calculator to see how big that is. So I'm going to calculate 2 times arc sinh square root of 3 minus square root of 3. So it's going to be around 0 0.9. So I will get about 0 0.9 from this parenthesis mgl plus 0.9 kl square. Good. So let's plug it into our energy conservation here. So right now, when we have a different form of uh, work done by friction, which is this thing, we will see that the speed of the rock will be k divided by m l square and then we have minus mu k 2 square root of 3 g l plus 1.8 k l square i'm going to further put this term and this term together so i will get k l square 1 over m and plus mu k 1.8. Something is wrong here. Uh, k L square, m L square. I should have m over here too. So let's pull out m k L square and then I have 1 plus 1.8. And it should be a minus because there's a minus sign here. So it should be 1 minus 1.8 times mu k. And then 
the second term will be minus mu k times 2 square root 3 g l or let's swap 2 square root 3 with mu k so by taking the square root of everything I can arrive at the speed of the block at the end for scenario B I can compare that with scenario A over here where is scenario A? A, 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 A is here so this is the final speed for scenario A we can see that when we have scenario B with the spring pushing downward this term becomes square root 3 and is minus so this term is already telling us the speed in scenario B will be smaller and for the first term we also need to subtract 1.8 times the coefficient of friction so the first term is also going to be smaller so overall we can see that the, the final speed in scenario B will be smaller than scenario A and the effect is more is important when we have a big coefficient of friction